This workflow is going to have a look at the new 2023 Twin Motion View Add in for Revit. So, here I have a simple Revit demo data set. It's pretty light, it's got some materials on it, and I want to now take this into Twin Motion. So, there's a few options here Open Twin Motion, Direct Link and Synchronize, Direct Link Connections. And then uh, the older option, I believe, to send out a Datasmith file and other different export settings here. So just going to start with the basics today. Going to open up in Twin Motion, have a test of making some changes in the Revit model with some of the geometry, and then seeing how that will link back into Twin Motion. Um, I'll then add some assets. Play around with some materials, set up some lighting, and ideally get something that looks presentable. So some of the options we have here, um, I don't have an existing project, so I'm just going to do this from scratch. These are the options. You can keep the hierarchy, you can collapse by material, you can collapse all. I like to keep the hierarchy. Uh, UV precision, um, I haven't gone into that too much, but I believe that will relate to UVW mapping. And then uh, some other settings here with uh, light and processing. So um, I'm just going to leave this all default and hit OK. And now we have the Revit file loading into the Twin Motion space. And here we have the model there. So just zooming out. And you can see it's come through, and come through OK. Um, a few things that I like to do is just delete this plane. So just select that background and delete it. And then go to here to the settings. Go to the location. And get rid of the background city. Again, if you want something like countryside, you could do all that. But I prefer to use uh, HDR, HDRI environments, which I'll get into in a second. Uh, for navigating here, it's the gaming key. So... Uh, w for left, S for zoom back, W for zoom in, D for right, and then um, to navigate up and down is your Q and E keys. And of course you can use your, your mouse to navigate uh, around as well. So uh, a quick simple example here if I want to make some changes to the design and just, just see the link. So... Um, here for this uh, roof terrace which appears to be clad with a carpet floor uh, we want to add some sort of railing here so we just want to do the link from Revit back into Twin Motion. So here we do have uh, the option to um, make some adjustments here or, or reload the file so you could just do it directly from here or here in Revit I could go and um, go to that uh, roof level, uh, save the project, and here on that roof level just go and uh, create uh, a wall, maybe choose the uh, right wall, and I'll very quickly and very roughly just do something here. So here are my changes, I go to twin motion and direct link and synchronize and then back here in twin motion those those updates are done so we're going to go through the exploration of the model add some materials and some lighting and possibly produce a animation or some stills of the model so as you can see, it's very simple. It's a, an open, an open space in the center. Um, I haven't designed any sliders here for it yet to close it off, but it's an open outdoor plan living space with a garage at one end and some bedrooms and a bathroom at the other end. And then as you go upstairs here, you have the terrace with the uh, current material, which is carpet. And um, what I want to do is start going through this model and adding some items from Twin Motion to make this look uh, presentable. So first thing I like to do is look at uh, HDRIs. 
um, you do have outdoor ones and you do have studio and skies these may take a little bit of time to load up just got to click on them and they'll start to load um, what's good here is to be signed in to Epic Games and then that way you can download all of that um, if you haven't signed in you'll have to go and do it so I'm just signing in as myself and uh, here you can choose an environment which would be now it's loaded it is uh, loaded and you can see the environment we have here and down when we get down to this level uh, okay some interesting things here happening with the power line so it all comes down to where this um, particular image was was shot so there's a few things here you can go and adjust the rotation so maybe we just don't want to see any of those power lines in the background um, maybe you know, something like this might be appropriate. There's a couple of things you can do with the actual um, dome. You can also, you know, choose whether you want that to affect the lighting or not. Um, so it, it's interesting um, how, what you can actually do with these tools. Um, other things you can do is you can customize um, the intensity to that. You can customize um, how you want that um, HDRI to work within the scene. So, um, back here with the skylighting. So, we have the skylighting environment. We'll go more. Sorry, back here. Skylighting to the environment. You'll click on that one. There's dynamic sky. This is the HDRI, but I usually find the back backdrop. HDRI gives you a bit more control. So once we do this, we'll see a dome and it may default to a certain size, but you'll just see there's, there's a little bit more control of what we've got here. So first things that we need to do is go to more. We get a lot more features. We want to drop the height. So get it down below um, my ground level. So about there looks okay. Um, as we start to rotate this, you can see those power lines aren't there anymore, which is kind of kind of handy. So it's kind of scaled everything back a little bit to build it within a dome. So this gives you a lot more um, control, and we can also do other things like adjust the intensity. This stuff probably will leave for later, but um, it can just be really helpful. Um, other things I haven't got too much into is like the the offset. This, if I'm looking at you know other type of tools um, you can adjust the UVWs of a spherical image and, and other applications so you, you don't need to do too much here um, and then you can rotate it around but we'll just leave, leave that for now um, other thing you might want to do is just adjust the size so you can see here you can actually control the scale of this dome which is a lot easier to, to work with so that's kind of nice if you're wanting to just get a little bit more um, control over the, the detail or the resolution of that that information there in the background so that that's my my preference just to, to do the lighting um, and that can make a lot of difference to the photorealism you might want to, might want to achieve uh, a bit later on so that's the lighting um, back here in the settings there's a whole lot of things we can get into which is to do with the um, rendering engine and you can turn this on and then you're going to see um, in real time the light calculating so I won't bother too much about that right now we'll just, just keep it on on default just with the GI illumination you can sort of see that's like light bouncing around you could turn that off if you want to uh, and then shadow but I'll just leave that as is and uh, now uh, I want to look at putting some context into this to make it look a bit more Believable. So uh, vehicles, we're at the driveway here. In fact, we'll, we'll do materials first and then we'll populate it with, uh, with context. So um, uh, at the moment, if we look at the driveway, the entry, um, we might want to look at ground coverings, nature, man-made. So nature is all your grass. So this is kind of a, a holiday house or a batch. Um, so we'll choose like some sort of grass that maybe isn't um, that kept well kept um, and you do want to adjust the scale here 
Uh, and you can see you want to take it up to 10. You can actually crank it up even further if you want. You can type that in and that will give you a bit more detail on the grass. But again, it's um, once we get into maybe the 3D mode of adding grass, you'll get um, better results here. Back to ground and to man-made, we can look at different types of um, asphalt for the driveway and um, different types of finishes for, for the concrete. So um, I'll choose something which is a little bit more modern perhaps. Those are the cobblestone tiles. Again, the scale doesn't really like the scale too much, but I'll do, do that for now. And then here for the uh, driveway, maybe that type of asphalt. So um, other things you might want to consider here, um, the detail or the junction between the driveway and the pavers, you can grab these objects and they are movable. So you can possibly go negative 0.1 or something like that. Oops. Um, so you may want to just drop that down just a, a little bit, which can just give you a little bit of uh, detail, bit of extra added detail should you should you want to have that. So you don't have to go back to Revit to do that. But again, there's always a knock-on effect. So we have um, issues with the, the, the hidden garage door there. So some other things we might need or want to do is adjust the uh, scale and the location of the texture map. So I've just gone here into the um, concrete and you can choose um, a particular concrete that you want. It is um, a bit, it's got a bit too much glow here in the preview, but you can drag that onto the material. That's how it will come in default. And then you can scale it up. Um, again, I'll choose say 20 to make that a bit bigger. Um, but I want the uh, adjustments of the X and Y and Z uh, values to change here. So you go to more and you can rotate it should you want to. So simple one is like 90 degrees, but I'm gonna keep it uh, on the standard location. And then here we can uh, move or stretch it. So I don't need to really move it in the uh, Z direction. I just want to move it up a little bit. And I want this uh, look and feel to um, have the concrete sort of dripping at the top. So um, I'll try my best to sort of get that looking kind of accurate. And um, so negative 3, 3. 3.35 no, the other way okay so you can play around with with all of this again you can probably stretch it as well but um, that's one way to get that looking a little bit more uh, believable but again it comes down to the finish you want um, and how nice you want it to look and feel for some people that might look a bit bit brutal so um, that's uh, one example of getting a bit more fidelity with the materials and then other things here. Um, you always want to choose a, a good glass and this may come down to what your preference is um, for the actual output here. So I want to focus on the outside of the building. I don't need to be looking into the building. So I might go for something like a reflective glass and you can see here it's giving us some nice um, results and it's reflecting that HDRI so that's kind of a nice reason to have those HDRIs in the design and I think uh, on the side of the building with that class um, now maybe I don't want to see as much on the inside there so if I just go down a little bit uh, it's not too bad um, but you could go and look at the opacity settings here so if we drop that down to say 50 or 1 that's going to let them more and then uh, 85 is less, or even uh, 90. Just because I want this to be more about the outside of the building and not have any distractions of the inside. Some other things we could do here, we could look under the object setting at particles and add uh, fire. So you got one here, um, a larger fire, 
which you can place inside of this this fireplace. Um, it is smoking quite a bit, or we can go for a smaller fire. Again, it is snapping correctly to the uh, fireplace. Kind of a, a tricky one to to work with here because um, it's a pretty controlled space, but we can move this up as as needed. And you can see here if I play around with what that is going to be fixed to, it's actually hitting on that face there. So um, quick example of adding some fire here. Um, looks like it's just going a little bit odd with the um, with the chimney there. But um, again, it's a nice simple tool to use to add instant particle effects without having to go and, and bake them in. Okay, so here is my updated model with some changes in the materials. So I've added some weatherboards, some finishes to the doors. You can see the windows with the reflections now. A uh, polished concrete slab and some materials added to the kitchen island here. So um, pretty, pretty simple. And um, to show you some of the things that I've just used here, um, you've got a little magic wand tool. Uh, what's interesting about black is it can be very hard to see in the shadows. So again, if I want to see that a bit better on this side of the building, I have my backdrop environment here. And the reason why I use the HDRI inviting environment is I can just do this um, and see the beautiful black material here um, and I'm just going to go and grab that eyedropper to bring out that material and I've just adjusted the scale and I've just gone to the color and made it uh, black. Uh, some other cool things you can do with this tool is you can bring in materials and assets from online so here just make sure you're signed in to your Epic Games account Here's materials and all the objects. I can type in a keyword here, iron, and this will go and bring objects or assets and materials that I could use in my design here. So there is a wealth of information available. I just need to click on that to download it. Once it's downloaded, I can just drag and drop it onto that asset. And of course, I could change the, the color as, as needed. So that's a really handy uh, tool to actually grab all this information and then bring, bring it across, even if you want Iron Man and stuff like that. I'm going to look at an option here for adding some grass to this lawn. So here in the uh, control panel, we're going to go to Vegetation Scatter. And I'm going to choose some grass types to paint with. So a typical one might be uh, a lawn, but I could bring in some others here. I'll just, just do it first with, with the lawn. You can also go and delete this after it's been painted. Uh, so select it. Here is the scatter, and I can go and scatter that. Click on it a few times to add a bit more dense on the lawn, and we can Go down and, and, and see that, that grass there. The other one I could do is I could bring in, say, some other grass type. So some wild grass. And then with those ones all selected, again, I can go and scatter. And I'll just move up a little bit. And you can see I'm getting nice, dense grass. So um, pretty quick way to add... A lot of dense grass so this is kind of a, a holiday house a batch where we maybe haven't haven't done the lawns and you can see uh, here I've actually broken that grass down into two bits so if we wanted to um, look at some other options here and I'll just do the uh, the clover fields two, three. Um, and again same thing so here we have some 
dense clovers. And there's a lot of detail here. Um, there are some settings should you want to um, turn off the, the wind effect. Um, and I forget where that is at the moment. Uh, I know you can do it with the individual ones. Here we go, settings. Um, so you can start to adjust these here once they're all there. So we can start to make them a bit bigger. We can maybe change one of our stripes, turn the wind on, turn it off, and leave that on, and then make them look more dry or more plush. So all of these things can, can be done. Um, again, we've just gone to the vegetation scatter, and the two options is the, the wild grass or the clovers. You can see some have gone to the the gravel there which I can I can do a bit later but it's a pretty quick uh, and easy way to do more realistic lawns and you can see there's kind of a, a culling at the back here so uh, when I get close to that it will draw that information as needed so that's kind of nice so um, it doesn't consume too much processing power on my PC Uh, finally, for this part of the basic demo, I want to be able to create uh, an image uh, based on the one I've got shown here. So this is just um, not in the media player at the moment. I'm just um, looking at a view that I want to choose. I'm not adding uh, vehicles and people and stuff at the moment just because sometimes that can be a bit distracting depending on the quality of it. So I'm just going to go to um, the location that I want for this shot. And maybe for this one, I might want something more from, from the center of the building. So I'm just going to zoom back a little bit until I get the, the rough shot that I want. And I always like to do the, the low shots, a little higher. And I'm going to create an image. So image is saved, and if I move this around I can just hit this little refresh button and that will update the viewpoint of the image so I'll um, use that as my view that I want and maybe the low shot um, and then from here I can go and make some changes to the quality of the image there's your lighting your renderer your location your weather um, so with the lighting, for example, at the moment, um, I'm using the dome environment. So I can go to that backdrop and look at the rotation. So for here, as I go and rotate that dome, I can see the reflection on the glass. I can get an idea of the light illuminating that black material, which is sometimes a little bit tough to, to light. So I'll go for something like that. Maybe there'll be a little bit of a glint on the glass there and um, I'll leave that as is for now and then just go back to lighting we can also adjust the white balance so 6500 is usually a good good starting point um, 7300 Kelvin is probably a little bit warm um, or you can drop it down to 500 for a cooler effect but 6500 is usually good I have left off the sun intensity I want this all to be lit by the environment but if I crank that up here you can start to see the Sun starting to illuminate that space but I don't want to go too too crazy on that I just want to keep this very very subtle so maybe I just want a little bit of a shadow but you can see without any Sun I can still get um, some illumination on that face and it sometimes can look a little bit more real um, and then you can go into a few more more settings here. I think if I adjust that, will we get a little bit of a larger sun? No? Okay. So, um, here, pretty simple settings. And then back in the image, there's a couple of things you can do. There's, there's the renderer, so we can turn on the path tracer, which is the ray tracing engine or global illumination. And you can start to see the impact of that starting to bounce some light around. I'm just going to leave that off, off for now. And I want to look more at things like the camera. Um, here we can turn on the parallel. Uh, again, I'm not a big fan of that unless it's absolutely needed. We can also adjust our focal length. So we can bring it back a little bit more. But 18 is usually pretty good to start with. And you could potentially look at things like 28, 
which is meant to be the peripheral of a human eye. Um, but I'll just leave on 18. Um, adding the depth of field can also um, add something to the shot. So at the moment, the depth of field is set close to the grass. And of course, we want to focus on, on the building. So as I go and crank that a little bit, um, maybe yeah, 35 meters might be right. We can also maybe adjust the view here. And we can get into adjusting the aperture. So this little symbol is um, uh, like a graphic for the opening in a camera allowing in less or more light. So if you've got that set to one, um, it will let in uh, more or less light. Um, looks like this one's not really doing anything for me at the moment. But if you change that, um, it should let in more or less light. But um, it's not doing it for me right now. Um, and then this is to do with... Um, the detail and the, the depth uh, and the blur that you get here. So just, just some simple things where you can um, work with the camera to achieve some more realistic results here. Um, near clipping, um, I haven't got too much into this just, just yet. Um, you can see it's starting to clip a little bit um, as I get um, further away. So I cranked it up. There's some visual effects here. Again, you could do these in post or you could do these here. Um, here's some pre-baked ones in, so um, I don't know if you want to go for that. Could give you some nice, nice effects depending on the desired uh, look. I'll just leave it on none for now. Uh, and then saturation. It sometimes it's quite good to actually desaturate just a little bit. Um, so if we put that on say 35, it just looks a little bit better with less saturation. Contrast, of course, is going to really bring this up quite a bit um, i usually find whenever doing visuals if you put things on uh, 65 or 35 it tends to, to work quite well um, so i'll leave that as as is and then just go back to visual effects um, other filters you have here again this is if you want to get a bit more graphical clay render um, you can turn that on if you want to i'll leave that off and then reflections um, again turn that on or off doesn't really impact this type of image too much um, and then um, finally here uh, I don't want to do too much with the scene states um, I want to go back to that that main image um, and turn on the lighting there's a number of other things you can um, play around with here should you want to but these are just some some basic settings that I'm using for today and you can start to adjust those depending on the graphic that you want um, but I prefer to keep it a little bit more subtle so uh, here back in the renderer we can turn the path tracer on again that's going to change things a little bit uh, you can of course crank these up you can see here uh, we're getting the fireflies so this is just doing the bounce calculations the longer you leave it for the um, better it's going to be. It's got a denoiser here, so that just helps um, blend pixels together. And then uh, anti, uh, sorry, uh, aliasing filtering here is the edges, uh, so it starts to clean up the edges a little bit. And if you've used other tools, um, there's there's more stuff to do with this, with primary and secondary calculations with other rendering engines. So um, here it's cleaned up, the no the noise has done its thing. You can see it's kind of blended a little bit. If I turn that off, it will start to sharpen up a little bit, but it'll take a little bit longer to, to render out. Uh, so that's the uh, the main settings that I want for my image. Uh, and then there's some formats here at the end in terms of what you want, and, uh, like for the height width, I'm just leaving it on full, full HD. Um, but you can crank it up maybe even more to 4K. And from here we have that image. Just make sure I refresh that. And we can uh, run that out as a as a final render. Um, one little last thing here, you could look at the emissive. Um, just turning that off makes things a little bit more 
realistic. Um, this is just just my opinion, but uh, we could again. This is like fine tuning a car. You can go back to the uh, the camera or the lighting, and you could uh, adjust things a little bit here, and you just might get a little bit more photorealism. Uh, so, just another little thing I just noticed here with uh, the final settings, and sometimes you can adjust the exposure. Um, 2.2 may overexpose a little bit, maybe just one. But you'll you'll start to tweak these things and get different results. So um, again, it all comes down to what you want to be achieving at the end of the day, how dark you want your darks, how light you want your lights. Um, all of this can be customized customized here. So from here, I want to export this out. Uh, I'm just going to do it as an image. You can do videos and uh, panoramas and stuff, but today is just to get some stills. I will grab that image there and double click it. And then start the export. And that should render it out pretty quickly. Okay, and here is the final image um, it actually rendered pretty quick and it is at uh, 4k and you can see the the detail here so this is just raw from twin motion and I could take this out further and, and do more in Photoshop but it's come out uh, pretty good you can see it's got the depth of field the lighting's looking uh, pretty good the materials looking good uh, so that's the uh, 30 minute workflow on how to take the river model into twin motion and then produce a render like this with some of the basic tools.